before we get into chapter 8 as a refresher let's revisit the contribution format income statement because um, we, we saw this in chapter 3 and just sort of refreshing you on what the assumptions were when we made that will help you sort of distinguish chapter 8 as being anything different because as you read chapter 8 and you observe what's being done you might say how's this any different from the contribution format approach well let's have a look here so here's the traditional approach notice that costs are organized by function sales less cost of goods sold is a gives us a gross margin less our operating expenses selling and administrative expense sometimes are just sorting to SG&A selling general and administrative uh, gives us our operating income and if you've taken any accounting courses even the most basic accounting course this is a general format of an income statement that you uh, that you see if you're an external user of, of uh, income statements perhaps uh, uh, looking at a company looking at their financial statements this is what you would see internally however it's more useful to use the contribution approach notice here costs are organized by behavior not function so we have our sales less our variable expenses variable production variable selling variable administrative to give us a contribution margin notice it's not a gross margin but a contribution margin it's the margin that contributes towards our fixed costs fixed production fixed selling and fixed administrative expense to give us an operating income of a thousand now notice I'm gonna point out a few things here and give you the assumption that changes with chapter 8 here sales are the same amount under both uh, uh, under both approaches and operating income is the same under both approaches nothing changes we still get to the same operating income this assumes the contribution uh, approach here we did in chapter 3 and that we've maintained throughout the textbook assumes that production equals sales that production equals sales and it is worth reviewing one of the paragraphs in chapter 3 again before we hit chapter 8 so let's do that notice down here uh, uh, this last paragraph here is very important so I'll read it along with you the simplified contribution approach income statement makes a common assumption that can cause confusion the variable production expense remember now the, that the the the, the uh, statement is separated into the behavior of costs of variable and fixed so the variable production expenses assume production equals sales in terms of units thus the expenses for production like those for selling and administrative costs use sales volume as the driver a more complete income statement needs to show beginning and ending inventory levels so that variable production costs can use production volume activity as the cost driver this last sentence here a more complete income statement needs to show beginning and ending inventory levels that's chapter 8 right here down here so while you're doing chapter 8 you may say to yourself but I think I've seen this before isn't this just a contribution format income statement or isn't the variable costing just what we've already done yes it is in the simplified form so if you get the contribution format income statement you get variable costing but now we're gonna drop the assumption that inventories are meaningless suddenly now we're gonna say inventories mean something and we're going to bring this in beginning and ending inventory levels so that production costs can use production volume activity as the cost driver and not sales activity as the cost driver sorry for rambling on a little bit but chapter 8 will be a lot easier to understand and a lot easier to, to, to get through if you understand that it's not a new thing and we're not starting from scratch here we're starting from what we learned at the end of chapter 3 about the contribution format income statement saying okay now let's account for inventories that's it that's the new thing in chapter 8 isn't that beautiful so with that introduction from chapter 3 out of the way we're ready to proceed with chapter 8 in variable costing so you'll recall from chapter 2 that when we talked about period and product costs we identified our product costs as direct material direct labor and manufacturing overhead here we're going to divide it into two components a variable uh, portion of manufacturing overhead and a fixed component of manufacturing overhead so 
we're uh, dividing our cost here in terms of behavior, not just function. And these were called product costs. They're called product costs because they flow into inventory first before they hit the income statement. We also refer to this as absorption costing because the inventory absorbs all costs of production. We also had uh, our period expenses, which were selling and administrative, but here we'll divide it into its two components, a variable part of selling and administrative overhead and a fixed selling and administrative expense. In chapter 2, we just called them selling and administrative. Chapter 3 and 4, we decided to classify them by behavior, and now we're still doing that, and these are period costs. In this chapter, under variable costing, this uh, uh, nomenclature between product and period costing changes just a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. The product costs are the first three elements here the direct materials, the direct labor, and the variable overhead. In other words, just the variable costs. The rest are referred to as period expenses. Now again, nothing new here. There's still nothing new from when we first introduced the contribution format income statement in chapter 3. We still have nothing new. So let's just continue on here and see what we get. We'll do an example of uh, just a small example. Let's say that we have a product where direct materials is $2.00 direct labor is four dollars the variable uh, portion of manufacturing overhead is one dollar and the fixed portion of manufacturing overhead is five dollars under absorption costing our cost per unit is twelve dollars everything goes in remember the the inventory absorbs all costs of manufacturing we say for the fixed manufacturing component, we say that the fixed manufacturing overhead costs are deferred in inventory. So at the end of a period, if we have even one unit left over in inventory, we, we say that we have $12 in inventory for that one unit. $5 of it is fixed manufacturing overhead costs that have been deferred in inventory. So that our cost of goods sold or our uh, operating income will be $5 higher because the $5 we incurred in those overhead costs have not been charged but deferred and carried as an asset. Under variable costing, we only use the variable component in inventory, which is $7. Now, here's the big thing. If production equals sales, if production equals sales, each period, if production equals sales each period, variable costing adds nothing new. Variable costing adds nothing new. Even in a case, even in a case where inventory is minimal, so let's say that production doesn't equal sales, but that inventory is just minimal. If inventories are minimal, then variable costing also adds nothing new. For example, we can think of just-in-time inventory systems, and at the end of the, this chapter we'll give an example of lean production, where it adds nothing new as well. So let's have a look at the uh, effect of inventory. Uh, under both costing systems, absorption costing and variable costing. Here we have uh, a replication of Exhibit 8.2 in, in your textbook on page 310, and the top part has the absorption costing income statement. Let's have a look. We have sales, 5,000 units at $20 per unit is 100,000. Less our cost of goods sold, we're assuming no beginning inventory. At our cost of goods manufactured, 6,000 units we made at $12 per unit. Uh, remember the example we gave uh, 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 that absorption costing included the fixed cost component of manufacturing overhead for $12. The variable costing only had it at $7. Here we have it at 12, 6,000 units, so we have $72,000 of inventory available. That's goods available for sale. And our ending inventory, we have 1,000. We made 6,000, we sold 5, so we have 1,000 left in inventory at $12 per unit. So there's the $12,000 ending inventory for a cost of goods sold of $60,000 for a gross margin of $40,000. 
less, of course, our period expenses. Selling and administrative expenses, 5,000 units at $3 variable per unit. Plus 100,000, uh, sorry, 10,000 in fixed costs. We'll make 25 operating income of 15,000. I think we all get that. That's fairly straight. We've seen that before. Let's look at what's new under variable costing. Well, our sales are the same. $100,000. Less variable expenses. Again, no beginning inventory. But look what happens here. Variable, we're only adding our variable manufacturing costs, 6,000 units at $7 per unit for $42,000. So we have goods available for sale of $42,000. Deduct our ending inventory. There's 1,000 units, but it's only at $7 now. So our cost of goods sold is $35,000. Up here, our cost of goods sold was $40,000. So it's a difference of $5,000. Now let's skip the rest and let's just fall all the way down to operating income. Notice here it's $15,000, here it's $10,000. So under variable costing, we're saying that, well, we didn't make fifteen; dollars we only made ten. dollars Here's why. is because the all the manufacturing, the fixed manufacturing uh, overhead costs right here are expensed entirely, whereas up here, they're hidden inside the inventory. So if you have $42,000 of variable manufacturing expense and inventory, plus the $30,000, that's $72,000. If you look up here, there's the $72,000. It lands all in inventory. So if you have 1,000 units left over, both of them contain the variable cost, but this also contains the fixed cost of $5 per unit. So 5,000, uh, sorry, 1,000 units at $5 per unit will be $5,000 of this 12,000 represents the fixed cost component. So in other words, we're only charging 25,000. 25,000 is in the cost of goods sold. Of the 60,000, the full 30,000 of manufacturing overhead isn't in there, only 25 is, which gives us an operating income of 15. But if we expense the full manufacturing overhead and we don't hide it in inventory we actually show 10 now for external reporting this is the way to go this is the only way to go this is the way you must do it but for internal reporting variable costing allows us to make the decision of saying look we're not hiding costs in inventory so we're not we're not going to fall into the trap of producing more inventory because we can spread more of our manufacturing overhead costs in it, thus making it seem like our cost of goods sold is lower per unit, it expenses the whole thing right away so that we're, what we're left with is a true measure of each variable of, of uh, each unit's variable cost because we expense it all right away.